On today's episode, I'm gonna tell you all about a dear friend, Tom Cram, who has had a significant impact on the pedal industry over the years due to his work within DoD and Digitech. Today, we're gonna to cover in depth his brand, Spiral. Spiral Effects originally launched as Rose Pedals in 2010-2011, but Harman relaunched Digitech DoD and put Tom over that venture, and he did that for seven years. In 2018, Samsung purchases Digitech and DoD and essentially fires Tom and his entire crew on the first day of Summer Nam that year. If you wanna hear more about this insane soap opera of events, I did an episode called The Legend of the DoD 250. I cover Tom's work extensively because he had an issue of the 250 in his revival of these designs during his time, but we need to focus on Tom and move on. So let's do that. At that summer NAM where he was essentially let go, he interviewed with different pedal companies. He was trying to figure out what he was gonna do, but on the drive home, he just couldn't shake the feeling that, hey, I've already done this. I wanna do something on my own. And that's exactly what he did. So he calls his wife and he breaks the news to her and he describes that moment like this. As soon as I said it, and she asked me, what do you, what do you wanna do? It, it was like Athena popping from the head of Zeus, you know what I mean? It, it came fully formed. I knew every single pedal of, of the first pedals I wanted to do. I knew what I wanted them to look like. With all of this said, prepare yourself to hear some of the most clever overdrive distortion fuzzes on the market today. I'm also gonna sprinkle in some of the pedals that he helped develop at Digitech DoD just for fun and let's do it, let's jam. The very first pedal I'm gonna cover actually comes from that period of time right when Tom started and right before Harmon decided to relaunch DoD and Digitech and put him over it. He was thinking about starting that company, Rose Pedals, and he had already designed a pedal and it was called the Black Rose Fuzz. Now this eventually turns into the Spiral Black Fuzz and luckily his original Rose logo looks kind of like a spiral and that all worked out for him. But this is a version one. Now there is actually about 100 of the original Rose versions. They're very, very rare. I've actually never seen one, but it goes from that to this. And now we are on a version two that I'm gonna jam on. He describes this as like 70s biker metal tone. And I really appreciate that. So I'll try to do like, biker metal on a different planet, like anti-gravity biker metal. It is based around and from this very old Maestro fuzz tone. I'm a huge fan of this unit, it's so cool. Weird and clunky though, but that's kind of why it's cool. And I'm glad that he took it and he kept what was classic, but he added in the nanotech technology. We'll put one of those on the screen. Basically just know that it's a really clever, newer way of clipping in a circuit that was developed over the last few years. So he's kind of blending the old and the new, and there's something great about that as well. I'm gonna add the 201 phaser from his series of relaunches that he did on these classic DoD pedals. So let's jam, and I'll have some spring reverb from the amp. Isn't nanotech that stuff Tony Stark uses? Yeah, it, the Tony Stark tech is in the pedal.
title number two comes from the summer of 2019 and it is called The Brute. It is another take on the same topology of this, the fuzz tone thing, but it's even more wildly different and really cool. I like this sound that exists in here that I'm gonna use and I call it the before Neil Young got mad at Spotify sound. It's a very fantastic tone. It makes me think of a really cranked tweed amp. And I'm gonna combine my favorite DOD pedal from Tom's era, the rubber neck. And we're gonna get crazy. There'll be some spring reverb as well. Just hold on to your horses and uh, just imagine me like wearing a leather vest and it's raining and I have a black Les Paul with a Bigsby that won't stay in tune. And uh, my drummer is really bad. Just imagine that. Hey! I mean, imagine it like. Oh. It's a it's a Neil Young reference. Classic, in my opinion, because if you've watched the DoD 250, the Legend of episode, I actually lay out for the first time ever what I believe to be the accurate genealogy and order of all the 250s starting in the early 70s all the way through. And I believe that Tom's version obviously is one of those. But then I think when the company shuts down, fires Tom and his crew, and he goes on to spiral, he comes out with the yellow. This is like a special edition of that, but it's essentially the spiral yellow. I believe this is the version nine of the 250. I actually talk about it in the video and we play it. I think it follows along and should be credited because Tom is such a huge part of the DoD Digitech story. And I think that spiral kind of crosses that boundary and I think it's an official version, at least in my mind. So maybe in your mind, you think that as well. It's based around that classic circuit. And I'm gonna throw on the 440, some spring reverb and get envelope -y. And I'm really tired of Nick's drumming. So Addison, would you play drums? Got you. Cool, cause I'm tired of Nick playing drums. Are you tired of Addison playing bass? I'm tired of everything. Okay, I'll play bass.
I just wow. want to say that you can use a pedal that goes quacky quacky and not let it go quacky quacky. You can just set it like I set it and pretend to be Mike McCready. So Mike McCready, if you're watching this, I always wanted to be you, but I ended up being me and that was a tribute to you. Let's go to the next pedal. This next pedal is a pedal I'm not gonna play because it evolved from something and into something. It is the Spiral White. It comes from a really cool pedal that I kinda don't wanna show you because I've collected two versions of it and I wanted to talk about it later, but for the sake of how cool it is, we'll talk about the Barkus Berry Standard Preamp. This came from this. I bought these because Tom told me about them. They're amazing. But then, a year later, after he releases this in 2019, he puts out the Secret Chord Deluxe MOSFET Dirty Boost. So this is a really, really cool, clean preamp, dirty overdrive boost pedal. And I have the box for some of these and I didn't show it earlier. So let's do that jingle. Ready? It's for the kids. Here goes the box. When you have a wooden box with a plexiglass flap lid, you are, you're in business. You pull it out, you, got, you have a map, a Utah map because he's from Utah. You have all kinds of stuff. There's a little ancient burnt offerings. There's like wood chips in here. We should do a whole live on just the packaging because it's that good. But the secret cord, here's what I'm gonna say. This is a really amazing boost overdrive. All you people who buy $7,000 clons, you should buy this. And if you're thinking about buying multi-thousand dollar clons, please just buy this. Please buy this. I'm gonna start a jam with it off and then I'm gonna turn it on. And again, please just buy this. Don't buy clons. This is better than a clon, I said it. I also want to say for those of you who are pedal part snobs and love the bougie stuff, he goes out of his way and uses a lot of really cool NOS parts. 
And now it's time for... Meticulously obsessing over small details no one should care about. So in this, there's an NOS Metal Can 741 op amp, and this has the tin can MOSFETs in it. So that being said, if you're into the bougie parts, Spiral is for you. Let's go to the next jam. This next pedal comes from a reach back into that period of DoD pedals that Tom was a part of. He did a collaboration with Shoe Pedals, who is a guy named Christopher Venter, and they created a pedal where it was a collaboration with DoD and Shoe Pedals, and it was called the Looking Glass. Now, somehow I don't have this pedal. I went looking for it. I know I have it, but it's not in the room, which means someone borrowed it and that kind of bothers me. I don't have this pedal, and I'm gonna say that. I just have to have that pedal. With all that said, he did the red, and the red is a further take on that idea and that concept. This is a killer Vox sound, so I'm using these Fender style amps, 6L6, 6V6 things, and this just sounds like an AC15 or 30 off the bat. So I'm gonna set it up like that, and we're gonna play like a dotted eight thing using the rubber neck. And you know, because I've wanted to play a whammy for a while, I'm just gonna use a whammy as well. This is my excuse, because he was associated with Digitech. pedal I'm gonna demo is possibly pronounced Dimhe or Dimmy. Dim, what do you guys think? Dimhe. Dimmy or Dimhe? I'm just- Can you do it whispery? Dimhe, Dimhe. We're, we're just displaying our ignorance of how to properly pronounce words, but don't let that get in the way of how cool this pedal is. There are two versions. There is the first version that he made in 2020, and then there's a new red mod. I'm gonna show that. I have the box. He has the box. It's a normal cardboard box, but it's the classiest cardboard box I've seen today. Oh, it's in the bag. It's in the bag. It's not pretty normal, nothing that weird. How the dim hay works. The dimmy? Dimmy, I gotta get off that, I don't know. In the comments, let me know how to say it. This pedal is very, very cool. I'm gonna have the gain cranked and it has a bias control. If you turn it this way, you get a sputtering gating sound. Well, I'm gonna keep that from happening. I'm gonna have the toggle up so it's a little bit higher saturation. So this is a massive fuzz sound, but if I barely play, like very lightly pick through chords, it's this bright, glassy, clean sound. So I'm gonna start a jam that way and then you're gonna hear a massive wall of fuzz and all I'm actually doing is playing harder. And that is a really cool feature. I would say I have never heard it. And I do say never in any other fuzz quite that way. I think it's really, really unique. I'm gonna use that whammy on the floor and I'm gonna go to the deep setting, which is the detune, which is a form of chorus. A lot of people don't realize the whammy does a cool chorus sound. And you know, before we get going here, I'm pretty sick of Addison's drumming. Ruth! So Nick, will you come back and play drums? Only if you say sorry. Sorry, whatever. Fine. Just get on the drums. We don't have all day. I said fine. I'm meeting my family for dinner at Burger King. Will you hurry fine. up? Burger King, the best food 
for fast times. As far as I'm concerned, Tom Cram is a perfect example of making lemonade out of lemons. And this is what he said about the moment that Samsung came in, let him and his crew go, and basically ended DoD Digitech. But in retrospect, in thinking about it, it's probably the best thing that could have ever happened. It's not like we dragged DoD and Digitech into the dirt again. We actually lifted it up. You know, we left on a high note. So my advice is that we should all follow Tom's example. And the next time you receive a major disappointment or a setback, just jump in and make something out of it. And I've said very often on the show that companies don't make things. Spiral is not ambiguously making a pedal. There is a man, Tom Cram, who has been through a lot, is very knowledgeable, cares about his customers, and has a brilliant mind for design and sonic space. So go support him. I love these pedals. I love what he's doing. And with all that said, let's go to record time. Today's record time is brought to you by 2020's Imploding the Mirage by The Killers, Addison's favorite band, and a band that's in my top 15 bands ever. And the singer, Brandon Flowers, he is from Utah, connecting it to Spiral very nicely. I was editing this and I just had to pop in and say, technically he was born just outside of Las Vegas, which makes him from Nevada, but he did spend a good portion of his childhood in Utah. So Josh isn't entirely wrong, but Jay just loves Brandon. We just want to rep him well. So for the fact checkers out there, now we're all on the same page. Okay, capiche? Go Brandon Flowers, go the killers. And I've never showed this record somehow on the show, and I love it. Uh, my favorite killer song is on this record. It is called Fire and Bone. It's as if Peter Gabriel was regenerated from his youth and joined the killers. I don't know how to explain it. It's really cool. The drum groove, the vocals, the melody, the whole thing. And it's just full of great tracks. Dying Breed, My Own So's Warning, Caution. Honestly, I could read every single song on here. It's fantastic. If you're not familiar, please check it out in the comments below. Let me know your favorite song after you listen to it. And if you are familiar and if you do love The Killers, drop in your favorite record and why in those comments as well. That's it. Thanks so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. In the comments below, let me know your favorite jam that we did today. Let me know your favorite spiral pedal that you heard in these demos. And if you are familiar with his work and own a pedal, let's talk about that down there as well. So hit like, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon to get notifications of future episodes. You can also jam along with us at BandLab. So click the link in the description. You can go over, you can sing, you can play another drum kit, you could play guitar, you could replace Addison's horrible bass playing with your own bass playing. You can do whatever you want. So me. Just go over there and join a Along and have a wonderful day. And also go to Spiral Effects. Check his website out. There's a link in the description for that as well. And go support his brand. Bye bye.